Hey guys, Mike here. This video is going to be about forming, pouring, and finishing a concrete shed slab. So this slab, the size is going to be 14 feet by 10 feet. And we're going to get the boards laid out. It's just, we're just using two by sixes. It's going to be between a five and six inch thick slab. So we'll just, we'll get the two by sixes up and then we'll just take an average of that, that sub base, that gravel base, and then we'll, we'll set our grades from there. So as you can see, this was kind of a grassy, loamy area, and the excavator came in and he dug out about 12 to 16 inches of that existing grass, and then he installed about 12 inches of gravel, compacted it nice and flat, and that's, that's what our sub base is that we're putting this slab on. Now we do a lot of concrete shed slabs, um, all different sizes, you know, 12 by 12, 12 by 10, 10 by 10. And I've got some other videos about shed slabs that we've done. I'll have them linked at the end of it, the video. They'll pop up at the end of the video so you can check them out. But make sure you stay to the end so you're going to see something we do a little different with this shed slab. So make sure you hang out and watch the whole video so you can find out what that is. Also, you know, where are you guys from that are watching this? I like to know where you're from, what part of the country. If you're from a different country, put that down in the comments and let me know where you're from. And then also, if you're thinking of doing a shed slab by yourself, let me know down there too. You know, I have a, I can help you out with that down in the description of the video. I got a course that's all about setting up concrete slabs like this, setting them up, forming them, pouring them, and finishing them. So if you need help, if you need more detailed instructions, step-by-step -step video type course instruction, I've got a nice video course that for you down in the description so you can check that out. So we're getting we're getting the forms all laid out, screwed together, measuring our square, you know, corner to corner, making sure this thing's perfectly square. This is going to be a a shed that's built. So it's not one you buy and set on top of the slab. So a carpenter is actually going to build this shed and that's why we're, you know, making double sure that it's nice and it's going to be nice and flat nice and square so it's real easy to build off from we like using those round metal pins they got holes through them so we can we can nail right through them or even or screw right through them whatever you prefer using we prefer using two and a half inch deck screws when we do our forming it's just i don't know for us it's just easier to to screw a board to grade and then we can unscrew it when we strip it and then we use those screws over and over and over again probably at least 10 times over again whereas a double headed nail you know you pretty much get one use out of it and then you got to throw it I'm using my laser to set grade that's my favorite laser you know if you've seen any of my other videos that's my Topcon self leveling it's an RLH5B I got a link for that down in the description that's what I recommend for using you know, for if you're in construction, if you're in concrete, if you're in the building trades or any type of construction trades, that's a great laser to have for setting grades and, and getting things nice and level and even setting slopes. You know, I, I can use that with that grade stick I have. I've got a ruler on it, so it's got numbers. I can, I can set slopes to, you know, all kinds of slabs that we use using that self-leveling laser. Now we're throwing in some wire mesh for reinforcement. This wire we got today actually came in a roll. A lot of times I'll buy the wire that's in the flat sheets and you know they just lay nice and flat and we can pull it up into the concrete. This stuff came in a roll so in order to get it to lay somewhat flat you gotta you gotta be real careful as you roll it out and cut it to length and then you gotta kind of bend it almost backwards a little bit to get it to lay flat. So we don't use rolls very often, but just today that's all they had for us, so we had to buy a roll. And the roll, it's about 150 feet long by 5 feet wide, so it's a pretty good size roll. Do 750 square feet. You know, we're only doing about 140 here, so. So here we got, we got concrete rolling in, you know, this is all we set, we formed this up real early in the morning. We got there about 6 a.m., got it all formed up, you know, in about 30 minutes or so concrete showed up by 7 a.m. and here we are pouring this thing so we're gonna get it all done in a day 
if you like these kind of videos, you know, I come out with a couple videos a week about all types of concrete stuff. That's what we specialize in. So, you know, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead down there and hit that red subscribe button and then hit the bell notification so you'll be notified whenever I come out with a new video. I appreciate that. Also, if you like these kind of videos, you know, hit the like button. Smash that like button. Let's see if we can get 500 likes on this video. That really helps. It helps me out with YouTube and if YouTube knows you guys like these things, then they'll, they'll share it with more people. So we're getting our concrete poured. I'm using a 3000 PSI concrete today, and it does also have fiber mesh. As you can see, um, I got my wire hook there. If you guys can see that wire hook, I'm pulling up the wire, then you know, let me know down in the comments. Say, uh, say wire hook or whatever you guys call that. But I am getting that wire pulled up into the concrete once you get it pulled up and you get concrete under it even if you step back on the wire it doesn't go back all the way to the bottom the aggregate in the concrete helps hold it up off the bottom so I know it's not ideal we didn't have any slab bolsters today to put under the wire but at the very least we're getting it pulled up into the concrete getting some of that stone and aggregate under it so it is doing it is doing its job and like I said, we got fiber mesh reinforcement in the concrete also. So we're going to, we get most of it poured out. This was about, you know, right around three and a half, four yards of concrete. And in, in the slab course, you know, I teach you all about how to order your concrete, how, how to figure it, you know, to get it accurate. And you learn about all kinds of stuff in there. So we're screeding, you know, we set the top of forms to grade, which makes it real easy to screed. So we got our... 2x4 magnesium screed about 14 feet long so we can just overhang it over the top of the forms and we don't want to get too much concrete in there you know we don't want to have to shovel any out if we don't need to and make a mess so we uh, we try to leave it a little bit low you know get enough in there to get part of it done and then add some to it just like we just did so we don't get it too high See, we got Tia, uh, Tia and Darren in there, kind of raking the concrete for us. So we got two really good, experienced rakers in there, and then me and Eric are doing the screeding. And we'll get it down just about to the end, and just scoop out a little bit if we need to, and then finish off that screeding process. And we can start getting the tools washed up. Now Tia is going to grab the bull float. How many of you guys have a have an experienced woman on the crew like we do you know let me know down in the comments if how many of you guys down there have a woman on the crew that'd be really cool to know I don't you know I don't know in Maine I don't think I know of anybody else that does I think I think I'm one of the few or the only one so if you got a woman on the crew that can pour and finish concrete let me know down there T is really good at it. this is her second year doing it and she's She's getting really experienced. She can, she can screed. She can bull float. She can run a power trial. She can run a steel trial for doing edges. So she can just about do everything now. So what we're going to do, like I said earlier in the video here, is I'm going to show you what we do for this shed slab. You know, like I said, they're going to be building it. A carpenter is going to be building this. So. I'm laying out right now for the anchor bolts and if you've never placed anchor bolts before you can watch Darren come behind me. I'm laying, the carpenter gave us specific instructions on where to put the anchor bolts and we got six inch anchor bolts here and he wants to leave them sticking up about an inch and a half or two inches. There's a two by six plate going on so Darren's just what we call wet setting them so he can stick them right down in there. They're not going to fall over. You know, if you don't pour the concrete too wet, they're going to stick up and stay straight. So he's doing the wet setting. And that's what's a little bit different for a shed slab that you're going to build versus one that you buy and have it delivered. You know, they're not going to want these sticking up. They're just going to drill down into the concrete and probably tap con the sill plate in on one of those. So anyway, if you, if you got value out of this video, I'd appreciate it if you give me a like. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.